Hey Energy Express friends, it's me, Joel, and welcome back. Do you like to go for walks and pick flowers? I know I do, and sometimes I give them to my mom, and then sometimes I try and make crafts with them. Well, today we're going to make a craft. Let's go see our friend Lori and learn how to press flowers and how to make crafts with them. Hi, my name is Lori Wright, and I'm the 4-H agent in Mason County, and I'm going to show you a craft using pressed flowers. You're going to be able to make a card for a loved one or possibly a wall hanging. So first I'm going to walk you through the materials that you're going to need. You're going to need several heavy books. I have four here. You're going to need newspaper or tissue paper. Now if you're using tissue paper, please, I, I recommend white. You're going to need scissors, glue, and you're going to need fresh flowers or leaves. You're going to need wax paper. You're going to need a small paintbrush to paint the glue on the flower. And then you're going to need paper or cardstock. I like using cardstock because it's sturdier when you go to glue your flowers. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is go outside in your yard with um, parental guidance and you're going to select some flowers and leaves that you would like to press. Um, please resist the urge to collect wildflowers. We need to respect and protect those for future generations. So just anything you find in your yard, um, you can use. So what I've actually done today is stopped at the Kroger's and picked up some fresh flowers. I didn't have any to pick from home. So once you've collected your flowers, you're going to bring them inside and then we'll get them ready. But uh, a couple things to keep in mind, um, don't collect flowers or leaves after a rain. It's going to have too much moisture and make sure you don't pick any that are buggy. You don't want to bring those inside. So once you have what you need, you're going to bring them inside, open a book and then you're going to place your newspaper or your tissue paper inside the book. And then, <clears throat> which typically you would have cut these already being outside, but I'm gonna cut a couple and show you how I would actually place them on the paper. So you can press the flower hole, um, being sure not to overlap any pieces or petals um, from the flower. You want to make sure that they press and dry nicely. Um, you can even, I've done this before, um, tear them apart and just dry the petals and then that way you can arrange them in any type of design that you like um, on the paper. Okay, so cover your your flowers and then you're going to close the book and then it's important to press and add more books. Now you're going to leave these pressing for a minimum of two hours and I say a minimum. You really need more time than that. I typically press mine for at least two weeks. So once you have um, your flowers pressing the way you want. Then you're ready to check and make sure they're ready and start your craft. So, I prepared a birthday card here already, but um, feel free to get as artistic as you like. You can add your own stems and drawings and wording to the card, make it as personalized as you like. Um, this one I've already started and I actually separated the clover that I like to press and shaped it into a four leaf clover because I wasn't lucky enough to find one of those. Um, and I'm not going to arrange the whole thing but I'm going to show you that once you are ready to place on the paper you're just going to take a little bit of glue and with the paintbrush and dab it on a thin layer on the back of the flower 
in the way that you want it to stick and then place it on the paper. Now naturally I'd take more time thinking about this at home but I want to show you how easy this is. Um, like I said though, keep make it a thin layer of glue. Just cover the back side and place it any way you want. Okay, here are some flowers that have been pressing about four days. I picked some leaves I thought were unique. Um, this is actually a rose leaf, leaf that I will go ahead and add on here. I think it adds a lot of contrast and color. Think vibrant when you're collecting your flowers. I love the little violets that pop up in the grass before it's mowed. Um, I have one here that's dried a dark purple. They actually lend a lot of color to your artwork, they're very beautiful and plentiful. Okay, so that's how easy that is. Then once you have finished your artwork the way you want it, you're gonna place it in wax paper, fold it, and then place it in a heavy book again and let it dry overnight. And the wax paper is gonna keep it from sticking together. So while I'm in here, I'll show you some other flowers that I've pressed. And you'll notice I, my roses were blooming. They were quite thicker than this when I pressed them. But the thicker the, the flower is, the longer it's gonna to take to press and dry nicely. Um, the thinner it is, like the leaves obviously dry quicker. Um, but just keep that in mind when you're planning your artwork. So you can be sure to add enough time to get it dried correctly. I have others in here as well. I have more roses. Um, this is wisteria that I harvested from my bush. So, see how vibrant they color, they dry. They're very beautiful. So, um, you know, once you let it dry, and the next day, then your card is ready to give to your loved one where you can place it in a frame and hang it on the wall. Here's an example of something I did uh, to preserve a funeral bouquet for my granddaughter when her great-grandmother passed away. I just separated the leaves and dried them and put them in the arrangement of a heart. Um, one thing to keep in mind though, when you're displaying artwork, it's important to keep it away from the direct sun because uh, as you can see, it causes fading in the petals. Here's another type of frame that can be used for um, pressed flowers. You wouldn't use glue in this situation, but um, it, you're able to see the plants from both sides. So that's another way to display your pressed art. But thanks for joining me today. I hope you get outside and enjoy uh, our beautiful creation and discover new plants and flowers. Thanks, Lori. That was a really great activity and very calming. And speaking of calming, let's go see our friend Alex and learn all about some breathing techniques to help us with being mindful. Hi, I'm Alex Kaufman, Grant County 4-H Extension Agent, and I'm here to help you learn some breathing um, through mindfulness. It's great for when you're stuck at home and getting frustrated, or when you have been at work for a long time, or or just um, need a breather, need a break from people. So breathing is a great tool, and there are actually a lot of different ways for breath, and a lot of different things that breath does and brings to the table. So what I want us to do first before we start our breath exercise is I want us to chime in. Um, I'm bringing you these activities through a new 4-H curriculum called GEM, which is Getting Experience in Mindfulness. Uh, it's an excellent curriculum, and uh, the 
the activities are for everyone, which is excellent. So the first one is chiming in. This is a singing bowl. And a lot of times sound helps us concentrate and bring ourselves inward. So the first thing we're gonna do is chime in to concentrate. So only focus on this sound. Excellent. So I hope that brought you into the, the sense of what we're doing here with breath. The first breathing activity we'll do is just breath awareness. There's nothing special about this other than it, it makes you realize what you're doing as far as breathing. So for all these exercises, I want you to sit cross-legged or in a chair on your knees. Um, sit up straight, bringing your shoulders back and down so you have that straight spine so you have plenty of air and space to breathe. The first breathing activity is bringing awareness to our breath. And all we're gonna do is breathe in and count one and breathe out. So the first start is breathing in. So one, we do this five times. Two, Three, four, five. That gets us started into the breathing exercises. Five breaths of only awareness. You can close your eyes if you choose to. It helps you concentrate and calm down more, but um, if you're not comfortable with that, um, you can keep your eyes open to keep watching the video. So moving on, um, a breath that we also have in our toolkit. So I'm basically giving you a breathing toolkit that you can use at any point um, whenever you feel, again, frustrated, stressed, upset, tired. Um, breath brings a lot to the table. Our next one's called uh, four, seven, eight breathing. And this one can be used um, to help relax the nervous system. So if you're stressed out or nervous, um, it decreases kind of internal tension and stress, um, and it can help you with falling asleep. So this one I'll explain, and then we'll do it once together, and then you can do it as well. You inhale gently through your nose while counting to four in your mind. You hold your breath while counting to seven, and then you release it by counting to eight, and that's one cycle. So we're gonna try two cycles together, actually, um, so you can get the hang of it. So remember, four in, hold seven, eight out. Four, seven, eight. So let's try it. So I count on my fingers to help, help you see, but uh, four in, hold seven, eight out. Let's try it one more time. Perfect. So that's four, seven, eight breathing. Helps with calming, tension relief, and going to sleep. The next one is one of my favorites. It's called bunny breath. Um, this one is good for if you've been, um, you know, either upset and crying or you're running and you want to catch your breath. So um, it's reminiscent of a bunny when you use it. So uh, we go in through your nose four times and then along out so what we do is um, this this oxygenates our body so in through our nose um, three times and out so <sighs> through your mouth so in three three to four times depending and then out through your mouth so <sighs> 
So it's reminiscent of a bunny that you're using your nose like that, um, wiggling it short breaths in. Um, so this really oxygenates your body. You may yawn, um, but it helps if you're kind of upset and you need that extra oxygen in. So one more time. In three times and out. So I like that one a lot, um, and it's good for when you're, it's reminiscent of what you do when you cry anyway. So it, um, your body naturally wants that extra oxygen when you're upset um, or when you've been running and trying to catch your breath. So bunny breath is another one for your toolkit. So, so far we have four, seven, eight, and bunny breath. And the last one I'm going to show you is whale breath. Um, this one's fun, and it can be used um, for can be used for when you're, you know, need to move a little more with your arms or legs or when you need some uh, relaxation, deep breaths. So this one uses your arms here and we go up and then you release it with like a whale noise. So, whoo. So try it again. Up. Whoo. So um, that's especially fun with kids if you're out there. Um, that may be your favorite one. So whale breath is the last one, and it it gets you moving. You can do it standing or sitting, um, but that's a that's a good breath for like <sighs> kind of just getting it all out there, moving around a little bit. So for your toolkit, um, remember to chime in or, or focus in on a sound. Um, that first five breath awareness to just even realize that you're breathing because we don't think about it all day long. Then you have bunny breath for when you're, um, you know, trying to get that oxygen in. You have four, seven, eight when you're trying to relax or go to sleep, release that tension. And then you have whale breath for kind of a movement, general full body breath there. So thanks for joining me. I hope you did some of these breaths right in front of your computer or phone, and I hope that you continue to use them and think about them and get a little relaxation this week. Thanks, Alex. I feel a little more relaxed already. And now we go to our friend Jody, and we go down on the farm and learn all about fruit production. Well, welcome to Barber County. I'm Jody Carpenter, uh, WVU Extension Agent in Barber and Randolph County. So today we're on Sickler Farm here in Motesville, West Virginia. Uh, we're going to talk about some fruit production, um, some strawberries, um, and some, some peaches, some pears, and some apples. So strawberries, we, there, there's two types of strawberries. There's day neutral um, or June berry, and then there's ever bearing strawberries. So day neutral or June berry, um, they'll flower and produce fruit in May through June, and then ever bearing strawberries produce fruit all year long. The difference between June bearing and ever bearing are the day length um, needed in order to produce fruit. So the strawberries here today are June bearing. So we're producing fruit um, June or into May, and then they'll keep producing up until the first two weeks in June. Strawberries can be used for lots of good things. Again, like blueberries, we can use them in pies, we can use them in um, milkshakes, we can put them on top of ice cream, um, we can make muffins with them, we can, you know, make strawberry jam. Um, so if you think about eating toast at your grandma's house, she puts jam on that toast. So strawberries are very good for you. Um, like blueberries, they're high in antioxidants, but they also produce um, they give us some, some minerals and vitamins that we need to, to live a healthy life. So when you're purchasing your strawberries, um, you can buy them one of, of two ways. We can buy um, plant plugs, which are already growing plants, or we can buy bare root plants, which are dormant plants. Um, so again, when, when you buy those, um, make sure you select a variety that's, that's situated for your, or that, a variety that's suitable for your area um, and, and what you want to get out of that berry. Do you want those strawberries in May and June or do you want them a little later on into the season? So when you plant that strawberry, make sure that you plant it with that crown at the soil lever, level. Um, don't bury that crown too deep or that strawberry um, won't, won't produce. It'll die off eventually. 
So behind me um, is an, an orchard. Um, in this orchard, orchard, they have apples, uh, peaches, pears, um, and down on the end they have some hazelnuts. So Nutella that you kids love comes from hazelnuts. So apples come in different varieties, kind of like with blueberries and strawberries. So in my hand, I have a Honeycrisp apple. So that's one variety of apple. You might enjoy a, a Fuji apple or a um, Red Delicious or a Golden Delicious. Um, the Grimes Golden, you know, was founded here in West Virginia. Um, they make excellent applesauce. Um, so go, you know, go look for a Grimes Golden and maybe plant that tree on your property. Um, you won't be sorry. So with apples, peaches, and pears, um, again, we can grow them for our, our use. Uh, we can grow them for um, like a you pick operation. So we can let people come in and pick them or we can harvest them um, ourselves and we can process them into apple cider, um, applesauce. We can make apple pie. We put a little ice cream on it. Nothing gets better than apple pie, right? Um, so again, if you have a problem um, or if you, you need more information, call your WVU Extension office. Um, they'll be glad to talk to you. Come out and do a, a field visit as well. Thanks, Jody. All of that talking about fruit made me a little hungry. Let's head over and see our friend Carrie and learn how to make some lettuce wraps. Hello, my name is Carrie Cart. I work for WVU Extension Service in the Kanawha County office. And today we are going to make BLT lettuce wraps. Now, before we begin, make sure you've thoroughly washed your hands. I've already washed mine and I have washed and sanitized my whole front area here, as well as washing off all my vegetables. So everything is clean and ready to go and let's get started. We're gonna start with a nice ripe tomato. Uh, if you have a tomato knife, you can use that, a serrated edge. If you have a very sharp knife, it'll work. We're just gonna quickly dice up our tomato. You wanna take out the core. If you're using um, homegrown tomatoes, remember your core might be kind of large, so you have to take it out. You want this in bite-sized pieces, not overly large, but just, you know, a nice bite size. See, I have a very sharp knife that will easily go through my entire tomato. Okay, and I'm just gonna scoop that up. It takes about a cup, about one tomato, if you will. When, you, when the tomatoes are nice and ripe from the farmer's market, they're nice and juicy. You'll have lots of juice that comes with this salad. All right, now we've got our tomato diced and in the bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and work on our cucumber. Now I'm using an English cucumber, which is um, a nice cucumber. It's a very dense cucumber. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of seeds in it, which is what I like. Now, if you're gonna be pulling it from the farmer's market or from your own garden, um, it's gonna have a lot more seeds in it. Um, yours from the garden will have a nice outside texture. You wanna keep the skin because that's where a lot of your fiber is. If you buy from a grocery store and it's been imported, it'll have a layer of wax on it. Uh, and you wanna peel the wax off because the wax doesn't taste good. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and slice off a little bit of this because it does have a, you know, the, the outside edge is a little crunchy. I wanna keep some of it for the fiber, but not quite all of the outside skin. So I've taken off the skin. Now it's best if you take out the seeds when you make this. Some people like the seeds. If you wanna keep them in, that's fine. These are small, you could keep them in, but like I said, if you're pulling them from the farmer's market, it's gonna have large seeds. I just take and go right down. See, I cut it in quarters and I'm pulling the seeds right out. Once you get the seeds out, you're just gonna line it up and dice it. Again, you want it in bite-sized pieces, not too big, especially since we're gonna make a wrap out of it. Okay, and I'm just gonna put it in my bowl with my tomatoes. And the next thing we're gonna use is we're gonna chop some scallions up or green onions, if you will. 
okay? Green onions are very reasonably priced. They've got a wonderful flavor. They're not quite as strong as a um, regular onion would. I always peel off the outside edge and then I'm just gonna chop them. If you don't like a lot of onions, don't put much in. If you love green onions, put a lot in. It's a salad, so you can kind of make it how you want. Okay, and I wouldn't go all the way to the end, I'd just go close to the end. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop my scallions in there. Now the next ingredient we wanna use is bacon. Um, if you use a turkey bacon, that bacon that is much healthier for you. Um, I knew I was going to be making this, so when I went ahead and cooked bacon the other morning, I just put and made a couple extra pieces. I've chopped it up, nice pieces. I'm gonna dump that in the top. And our dressing is simply low-fat mayonnaise. Nothing to it, easy. Just a couple tablespoons. That's a generous couple tablespoons, but it will be just fine. Doesn't need any extra added salt because you get all the salt from the bacon. And we're just gonna kinda lightly toss and stir this up. Now, a lot of salads are good if they sit for, you know, 24, 48 hours. This is the exception to the rule. The longer this salad sits, the more weepy it gets. All your tomatoes and your cucumbers will weep out all their liquid and it will become a little mushy. So this is a salad best made right before you're going to serve it. Now, you could end it right there and serve it in a bowl just like that. And see how good that looks? It's nice and yummy. It's very fresh and crisp. The other thing you could do is take lettuce wraps and make wraps if you wanna be fancy about it. Now you want a lettuce wrap, a lettuce leaf that is uh, very pliable. So a Boston bib or a, um, a just a regular bib lettuce. You're gonna put a nice scoop in there, put it right in the center. You're gonna take and you're gonna fold your sides in just like you would a burrito and roll it, keeping all the goodies inside and set it down on the plate. Let me show you one more time. A nice piece of lettuce. A nice scoop full of that salad and roll it just like a burrito. The sides in, the bottom edge, and then flip it over. And sometimes they fall apart, which makes them fun to eat. <laughs> but that's it, Simply Lettuce Wraps. I hope you enjoy and have a great day. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. Boy, did we learn a lot. What was your favorite part? The lettuce wraps? Mine too. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.